Good morning, everyone, and happy Sunday. Welcome back for our Sunday school time. I am coming to you from church today at Playground. I know that this has been a very odd season, but I hope you have enjoyed the parables so far that we've been going through in July. So I'm here just to give you a little bit of a reminder and a welcome. My friends, as we go through the next four Sundays of stories together, we're gonna learn a little bit about some women of the Bible that we haven't necessarily had time to talk about before. And I'm so excited to do it with you through the Good Shepherd curriculum. Please enjoy, wonder, ask questions, and just take time to think about all of these great stories. Parents, remember, and guardians, this is not a time for you to answer those questions. Be in wonder and amazement right along with your children. And some of the time, these questions don't even have answers. We hope that you'll connect with us after the 930 Facebook Live worship service through the Children and Family Ministry Facebook group or also on the website to find these videos. Finally, kiddos, there are extra activities for you to do to help you learn even more about these great stories. Where can you find those? Just head on over to the Children and Family Ministries Facebook page. Thank you again for joining us. Let's get started and enjoy these stories with our storytellers. Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to our 930 Sunday School time. I have another wonderful Good Shepherd story to share with you this morning about an, two incredible women of the Bible. My name is Chessie Brenton, and I'm the director of Children and Family Ministries at Manchester UMC, and I am so excited that you are here with us today. So let's get started. All of the words to today's story are inside of me. Would you please make silence with me so I can find the words to today's story? I wonder who will be a part of our story today. Once, there was a woman named Naomi. She was one of the Jewish people of God. She and her husband and her two sons had gone to the Gentile country of Moab when there was a famine in Judah. There, her husband died. Then, her two sons married Gentile women. These women did not understand that Yahweh was the true God. Later, both of her sons died, and Naomi and her two daughters-in-law started back to the land of the Jewish people. Naomi told her daughters-in-law to go back to their parents' homes and find new husbands. Both of the women were very sad because they loved Naomi like she was their mother. One woman, Orpah, went back to her mother's home. But the other woman, Ruth, said she would stay with Naomi forever. She promised Naomi that she would go wherever Naomi went, 
She would worship Naomi's God and Naomi's land would be her land. Together, the two women went back to Bethlehem in Judah. When the women got there, they were very poor. So Ruth went to the fields where the men were harvesting. The Hebrew people would let the widows pick up any extra wheat that fell after the harvest. Ruth went to the field of a very rich man named Boaz. When Boaz saw her, he asked other people who she was. They told him about the story of Naomi. Then Boaz went up to Ruth and told her that she should pick up wheat only in his field and that he would protect her. Ruth asked him why he was being so nice to her. Boaz told her that he had heard about how kindly she was treating Naomi and how faithful she was to her even leaving her own land to come here with Naomi. Ruth told Naomi all that had happened. Naomi told Ruth it was a good thing that God had done for them. Ruth worked in the fields of Boaz all through the harvest. Then Naomi talked with Ruth, telling her how she could show her love for Boaz. Boaz was very pleased when he found out that Ruth loved him. He made all of the arrangements with the family of Ruth's husband to be sure there was no other relative who wished to marry her and buy the land Naomi's husband had owned. These were customs in Israel at the time. Since there was no other relative who wished to marry Ruth, Boaz and Ruth were married. Later, they had a son who they named Obed. Obed later had a son named Jesse, who was the father of David, who killed the giant and became king of Israel. I wonder, I wonder if Ruth was ever lonely in her new land. I wonder why Boaz didn't tell Ruth that he loved her. I wonder if God smiled when Ruth and Boaz were married. I wonder if it mattered that Ruth wasn't a Jew as a child. Now I have some wondering questions for our older children. Ruth chose to stay with Naomi instead of going back to her family. Share a time when your friends have been as important to you or more important than your family. The people of God had a tradition of letting poor people harvest anything that was left in the fields instead of going back and getting every bit of it for themselves. 
What can we do today to give people who are poor dignity when they need help getting food and shelter? Naomi and Ruth plotted together to find a way for Ruth to entice Boaz. How do you think God felt about this less than honest approach with Boaz? How do you feel about it being a part of the Bible? In this story, there is much meaning given to the names people have. Do you know what your name means? If you could have any other name, what would it be and why? My friends, watch carefully as I put our story away for today. Because when we get back to church, this might be a story that you want to share with friends or with family. Boaz. There we go. What a great story, Ruth and Naomi. Thank you so much for joining me today for our story about Ruth and Naomi from the Old Testament. I'm so excited you're here. I miss you all, but let's stay connected. Go to the Children and Family Ministry Facebook page and you'll find lots of activities to help you learn more about this story today. Have a great week and I hope to see you very soon. Goodbye.